Hi everyone and welcome to our quick tutorial on the Blender Scene Export option from Wonder Studio. Upon opening the Blender Scene file, we can first load our character's textures. First, we can go into our camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad or going to view, cameras, active camera. Next up, what we want to do is go to File, External Data, Find Missing Files. Next, we want to navigate to our Textures folder for our character, which is right here, and we want to press Find Missing Files. Upon loading the textures, we can go to Viewport Shading Rendered. And now we can see our character rendered with his textures set up. Next up, we want to also load our clean plate to our camera preview. So by selecting the outline of the camera right here, we can go to camera's options, background images, and you just want to enable background images. If, however, your path is not set up correctly, you can press the button right here, browse image, and you just want to find the folder for your clean plate. Here we have our clean plate that we've got from Wonder Studio. If, however, you've done some additional image or video processing and your clean plate looks better, you can also load that one. Upon loading, you will see that your clean plate is going to be updated. Next, what we can do is check our character's animation as Wonder Studio generates animation for our character based on our source. If you want to scrub through your animation, I recommend going back to solid preview mode as the rendered one is going to be very slow. We can scrub through our animation down in the timeline. If, however, we are not happy with the animation and we want to change some particular frame or the animation as a whole, we can also do that. What we want to do is select our character's rig, go to pose mode by pressing tab, or you can do it right here by changing from object mode to pose mode, and you can also enable x-ray right here. In this case, I might want my character to be looking more towards the camera. So what I can do is maybe select his neck bone, press R on the keyboard for rotation, and then press an axis on which I want to rotate the character. So basically X, Y, Z. I can also rotate his head. What I can do also is maybe change up his pose a little bit, change the pose of his shoulders by rotating his z-axis and also maybe straighten him up a little bit. There we go. Next up, since our character called Small Alien also has fully supported blend shapes, we can even change his face estimation. So we can go to viewport shading again. And from here, we can first click on our model and go to Object Data Properties. Right here, we have the menu called Shape Keys. And here you basically have all of the blend shapes for our character already prepared and animated. Depending on what you want to do, you can change any of his blend shapes already animated here. What we might want to do in this example is maybe give him a smile. So if we go down to, let's say, lip, smile, closed, left and right blend shapes, we can just increase their value, let's say up to 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.35, also on the right side. And you can see the facial expression of our character changing. 
what we might want to do now is maybe pull his eyes closer or towards the camera. So we can use the eye left blend shape, increase it to let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.3 maybe. And maybe we can give him a little bit of a bigger squint. and make the eye blink smaller. Basically, with Wonder Studio, you can go through all of these blend shapes for your characters that have facial support and change them up to change the animation, to change the facial expression of your character and so on. Next up, what we can do as Wonder Studio generates lightning components, we can go and further alter all of the generated lights that we have with Wonder Studio. If we go to the collection right here, named Lights, we can see that there are a couple of lights being generated by Wonder Studio. Lights 1 and 2 have been generated by Wonder Studio, but Lights 3 and 4 have been set up by me in this tutorial in order to demonstrate the range of possibilities in this Blender scene export. So we can go in and maybe turn on light one by enabling it. We can see already a huge difference in the lightning of the character. We can also use light two, which gives an even bigger effect. We can of course, we can also go into this lights option by selecting it. And right here in object data properties, you can change the color of the light, you can change the strength of the light, you can maybe increase it if we want to do it right here, and you can also change the angle of the light as well. As I've said, I've also set up two different lights, two separate edge lights for this character from the left and from the right side. Now, if you want to further change your lights or you want to change the lights that have been generated by Wonder Studio, you can also do that. I will go out of camera view by pressing zero on the keyboard. And here we can see all of the lights that have been set up or generated. So what we can do is maybe go to top view, select one of these two lights. By pressing G, I can move it. And by pressing R, I can also rotate it. So we can give it a different angle. And then by pressing zero again, I can go back to camera view. And now we can, of course, again, change all of these lights, change all of their respective options and settings. If we go to the red light, maybe we want to make it more red. We can change the power, increase it further. Maybe we want to decrease its size. Same goes for all of the other light objects. After setting up the character, we can also change the camera's framing and parameters, such as the focal length, zoom, and others. And we can also turn on settings such as depth of field. How we can do that is we go to our camera's options again. We can select settings such as lens, and here we have focal length. What we can do is just change this option. Okay, maybe not go that far. What I want to point out now is that the clean plate won't be affected by configuring the camera settings since it's not a part of the 3D scene. What we see right here in the viewport is just a preview inside the camera. Everything that is in 3D space is going to change, such as the character. As I've already mentioned, we can also turn on effects such as depth of field, so we can enable it right here. And as you can see on the edges, now we have a certain blur on our character. Also, in the shader workspace, which you can find at the top, we can edit the pre-made environment nodes to further adjust the lightning and the look of the shot. If you select shader type world right here, you can see that we have a node called lighting in which we can change certain aspects of the lighting, such as the environment map and the reflection map. We can also rotate the environment to get a further different lightning. So maybe we can go in and change the environment lighting. We can increase it. 
that might be too much. Maybe we can go down a little bit, see how that looks. And also we can increase the reflection map as well. And what we can finally do is go to the compositing window. If we want to do any additional color correction, we can add color balance and so on. We can do it right here. So what we want to do is just to create a viewer node so we can see our render right here. Next up, we need to end the compositing window, set up the clean plate. So we can right here where it says clean plate, we can click open. And we can just navigate to our clean plate. Set up the start frame to zero, of course. And here we have our clean plate and our character already rendered. So if we want to add a redder color to our small alien, what we can do is select our character pass node, add a color balance, let's say, node right here, go from image to image or connect image to image. And now we can just, let's say, go use this lift node right here and just make it a little bit more red there. This is too much. We can go up a little bit. There we go. Now, if we maybe want to add a little bit of a contrast to our small alien, we can also do that. Add brightness and contrast node, connect it right here. And then let's say, brighten him up a little bit. This is just going to add a small effect, but it lets us pre-compose him pretty nicely. Maybe add a little bit of a contrast, why not? And now you can also like go in and preview every single node individually. You can see what it does to our render. That has been pretty much it. Here you can just continue freely adjusting uh, the look of your shot in the compositor or render out separate passes and composite your shot in the software of your choice. This has been a short tutorial on how you can use your Blender Scene Expert option from Wonder Studio. I hope this helps you and lets you be more creative in using Wonder Studio. Thank you very much for following. If you have any additional questions, you can go to our YouTube comment section or to Wonder Studios Discord and ask them there. Thank you very much and enjoy. Bye.